In this video, we share 15 plus handy iPhone 10 tips. Check it out. <laughs> Even though it's smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus, the iPhone 10 is still large enough to where it can be difficult to reach those corners to invoke things like control center or notification center. And there's no home button on the iPhone 10, of course. So how do you go about invoking reachability to access those hard to reach areas? Well, simply go into settings, go into general, go into accessibility. Under the interaction heading, you'll find a reachability toggle. So just switch that on, it's off by default. And once you do that, just simply swipe down at the bottom of the screen near the home indicator and that is how you invoke reachability on the iPhone 10. Now, even if you're on the home screen with no indicator, you can still just swipe down at the bottom area to invoke reachability to access all of those hard to reach elements on the iPhone's display. Now, did you know that you could access control center and notification center using reachability? All you need to do is simply swipe down in the upper right or upper left hand corner of your pull down display, just like this. Now you can easily access both control center and notification center without straining your fingers by means of reachability. Now you may find it odd that you can't enable a battery percentage in the iPhone 10 status bar. However, by invoking control center, you can quickly access your current battery life. To invoke the app switcher on the iPhone 10, Apple instructs users to swipe up from the bottom and pause. Simple enough, right? But you don't have to be long winded with it. You can simply swipe up quickly, pause and release and the app switcher will open. Some people like to swipe to the left immediately and the app switcher will open. The point is you don't have to pause for a long time. The app switcher should open up immediately as soon as you pause. To quickly open the last opened app while on the home screen, simply swipe to the right at the bottom of the screen like this. Super simple, right? Let me show you one more time. Simply swipe to the right like this. Now here's a handy little tip for quickly switching between the last two apps that you used. So open your first app, swipe right, interact with that app, just like this, and then swipe right again and it switches to the previous app. Now if you interact with that app, swipe right again, it switches back to the last app. So you can easily use this to copy and paste information between two apps or just uh, negotiate information between two apps quickly. However, if you don't interact with the app and you swipe right, it'll switch to the next app in the app switcher. Now it's pretty well established that there's no home button on the iPhone 10, right? However, by going to settings, general, accessibility, assistive touch, and enabling the assistive touch switch, you can enable a virtual home button. Let me show you how to do this. So all you need to do is set up a custom action. In this case, I'm gonna use 3D touch and going to set that to home. And now whenever I 3D touch that virtual home button, the assistive touch little button there, it will emulate a home button press. So if I 3D touch, it goes back home. Let's try that again. So 3D touch, it goes back home. And of course you can assign that to any sort of gesture, a tap, a double tap, etc. Now we talked about how difficult it is to reach certain areas like control center and notification center. What about assigning a custom action like double tap to invoke control center and then a long press to invoke notifications using assistive touch. So double tap opens up control center and the nice thing is that you can move the assistive touch nub anywhere on the display so it's easy to access. Now let's try a long press this time to open up notifications and I can get back to control center by a double tap. Super simple, super easy. Combine Face ID with Hey Siri for super quick app launches from Wake. Just tap the screen, look at it, say Hey Siri, open Safari. And bam, you're open to Safari that quick. Or just tap it, look at the screen, say Hey Siri, open App Store. It opens up the App Store like that. Or you could tap it, look at it, say, hey Siri, open the iTunes store. And it's open like that. So simple, so quick. Leave me a thumbs up if you appreciate that. Now I think by now you realize there's no home button. So taking screenshots is gonna be a little bit different. You need to use the volume up button plus the side button to take a screenshot. So the nice thing is that in iOS 11, you can do markup with screenshots. It's just much more advanced than it used to be. I actually have a video 
I'm taking screenshots down below in the description, so if you want more details, check that video out below. Because Siri has been mapped to the side button, turning off your iPhone is a little different now as well. So to turn off, you need to hold the side button and one of the volume buttons, or you can simply head over to settings, go to general, and then at the bottom of the screen, tap shutdown. Now I'm going to show you how to enable screen recording on your iPhone 10. Go to settings, go to control center, select customize controls, scroll down, tap the plus button next to screen recording, and you can rearrange that to your liking if you wish. But now when you swipe down to invoke control center, you'll see a screen recording button. 3D touch that button to enable additional options such as microphone audio, or if you want to, you can simply tap on it to start a recording. It'll count down, and once recording starts, you'll see that your clock turns red, indicating a recording is in progress. Now to stop the recording, simply tap the clock or tap the little button in control center, tap the clock like that, tap stop, and now you can tap the notification to open up your photos app where the recording resides and play that back if you wish to. Now this isn't an iPhone 10 exclusive, but it is very useful for the next tip I'm gonna show you that is an iPhone 10 exclusive. When recording an emoji, you only get 10 seconds by default, which isn't enough time for those really drawn out productions, right? Now you probably know where I'm going with this, but yes, you can harness the power of screen recording to make an emoji productions that have no time limit. So just enable screen recording and start talking, <laughs> just like that. And you can make it as long as you want to Hey, you can even switch between characters if you want to on the fly and continue recording. Now, as I'm demonstrating this, my head's like turned to the side, so it's not ideal, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now we can stop the recording. We open up our Photos app, we can play it back. We can even throw this into an editor like iMovie or Final Cut Pro to really take it to the next level. Now maybe you know this, but I feel like a lot of people don't know this. You can actually make an emoji sticker simply pose the way you want it to look, and then tap and drag to the conversation. You can even rotate and scale if you wish to, and just drop it right there on the conversation. Cool. Now, if you're watching a video and you wanna fill up that entire screen of your iPhone 10, simply double tap on the video to bring it into full screen view to embrace that notch. Now obviously this will crop out some of the video, but I just think it looks so good on that edge to edge display. What about you? What do you think? Do you ever use your iPhone in the pitch black dark? I think all of us do from time to time. What we'll do is we'll turn the brightness all the way down so it doesn't blind us, right? But even the lowest brightness really is still pretty bright in a pitch black room. So although you probably shouldn't do that on a regular basis, here is a nice tip that can help. Go to settings and then go to general, and then go to accessibility, go to display accommodations next, and then enable reduce white point. Now drag that all the way up to 100%, and this allows you to reduce bright colors beyond what's possible with the normal brightness slider. So let me show you how it works. So let's first go back to our home screen, and then invoke control center, and then turn the brightness all the way down. Notice you can barely even see it now because it's so dim. But if you were in a pitch black room, you would be able to see it better, right? Now I understand that having to venture all the way into accessibility and display accommodations isn't the most ideal thing when you just wanna quickly reduce the white point. So with that in mind, you can assign a shortcut to reduce white point. So just scroll all the way down under accessibility and then select accessibility shortcut and then enable reduce white point. Now, when you triple press the side button, it's gonna enable reduce white point and then simply turn down the brightness to a comfortable level. Now, I will say, at least on the OLED display, that enabling reduced white point can have the tendency to reduce the fidelity of text. Keep that in mind. iOS 11 features a pseudo dark mode that you can enable via settings, general accessibility, and display accommodation. So you see invert colors there, Enable Smart Invert, and you will invert colors to give you sort of a pseudo dark mode. It's not a real dark mode. It doesn't work within all apps. Certain apps will benefit heavily, like the Settings app, for instance, or the Mail app, uh, but other apps don't work so well. 
But for the ones that do, it's great because of course the iPhone 10 has that new OLED display for super high contrast ratio. You get super dark inky blacks and that makes darker interfaces look particularly good. It's gonna be great for nighttime reading and browsing. And like I did earlier for reduced white point, I assigned a shortcut to smart invert, which allows me to quickly invert the screen for that pseudo dark mode in supported apps, just like this. Now, if you tend to have trouble getting Face ID to work quickly, you can of course go into the Face ID settings and disable where it says require attention for Face ID. Now this will make it so that you can unlock your iPhone without actually needing to look at the true depth camera. Now obviously disabling this will reduce some of the security on your device. For instance, say you were sleeping and someone pointed your iPhone at your face, it's possible that they could unlock it in that case. Now I'm unlocking my phone, I'm not looking at it, but I have my face in front of it. You can see it unlocks just like that. So this is particularly helpful for those times when you're wearing sunglasses that aren't compatible with Face ID. And our final tip involves closing apps more quickly. Simply invoke the app switcher, tap and hold on an app card, and then you can either swipe up like this to close an app, or you can quickly close all apps by tapping repeatedly on the minus sign. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? Do you have any other tips to offer? Let me know down below in the comments section. Again, smash that like button if you appreciated this video and check back later, because we'll have tons more. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.